stop. Don't wire your panels incorrectly. My name is Benjamin, an application engineer here at Non Solar Electric. We're going to help you plug into solar. In this video, we're going to help you understand the proper way to wire your panels and select the proper charge controller for your RV solar project. Here I'm in the RV. On the roof, we have six 420 watt panels coming down in three groups of two series. That power is gonna come here to a breaker that we're using for a means of disconnect in case we need to service one of these charge controllers. That power is gonna come in about 120 volts. We're gonna, the charge controller is gonna step that down to about 50 something volts to charge the batteries. That power is gonna come through these breakers on the way to the batteries, providing us with overcurrent protection for the wires. We have th three charge controllers in this rig because of voltage limitations from the panels and to help mitigate shading. Three independent charge controllers allow one section of the roof to be shaded and the other sections to still be producing power to charging the batteries. Why do we want a series panels versus paralleling? We want a series panels on a roof of an RV to help mitigate shading. In a, in a series string, when we have a little bit of shade, the array is gonna output a little less power by the voltage dropping just a little bit because of those bypass diodes, we only lose that section that's shaded. The charge controller can compensate finding the max power at that particular point, still bringing in a good proportion of the array, probably 80, 90% of the array even if we have just a little bit of it shaded. When we parallel panels and one little portion is shaded, the voltage of that panel will drop, causing the charge controller to not even see that panel. So for example, if we have two panels and we have a little bit shaded and we're paralleling them, then the charge controller is really only gonna see one and we've now reduced our output from the charge controller to about 50%. Now that we've talked about why searsing our solar panels is optimal for an RV application. Let's now look at charge controllers, especially the Victron charge controllers. Victron charge controllers have two numbers that you wanna be aware of. The first one is max voltage from the array, and the next number is the max amount of power going into the batteries. Here we have the Victron 100 by 50 charge controller. This is often used in smaller RV applications where you don't have as many panels. Just to be clear, the 100 on this charge controller means 100 volt max from the solar array. 50 amps is the max amount of current that you can put into your batteries. Here we have a larger charge controller from Victron. It is a 250, 100 charge controller. So 250 volt max from the solar array and 100 amps max current to the batteries, oftentimes used with larger solar arrays. Here on the left, we have even a larger charge controller. This is the 450 volt, 100 amp charge controller, often designed for off-grid Victron systems. 450 volts max from the array and 100 amps at 48 volts to the battery bank. How much power? can a 100 by 50 charge controller from Victron handle? At 12 volt battery bank, we're charging about 14 volts, so you can handle about 700 watts. For 24 volts, that would be doubled, about 1400 watts. The 100 volt charge controller line cannot do 48 volts, so we'll have to go with a bigger charge controller if you, if you need 48 volts. How much power can a 250 100 charge controller provide? For 12 volts, we'd be charging about 14 volts, so about 1400 watts of power going to a 12 volt battery. 24 volt systems, we double that, so 2800 watts of power going to the batteries. 48 volt systems, we quadruple that, so 5600 watts of solar power going to the batteries. So the voltage of all these charge controllers is the limitation of how we connect the panels to the charge controller. So this 450 100 here can provide the same amount of current to a 48 volt battery as this 
charge controller, the 25100. We just can wire more panels in series with the 45100. Victron charge controllers can work with a wide range of batteries. For example, lead acid, AGM, and even lithium batteries. Programming this can often be, be done using Victron Connect on a smartphone, the Serbo GX, or even predetermined rotary dial settings on the bottom of most charge controllers. In a closed loop application, the charge controllers are receiving communication from the servo that is receiving information from the batteries, curtailing how it's charging. And that is done by the batteries telling the system what voltage it wants to be charged to and how much current that it can accept at that given time. Let's now go program a charge controller and look at the settings that you wanna make sure you program for your particular battery. All right, we're in front of the computer. We're gonna now program the Victron charge controller. We're gonna use Victron Connect. It is free software from Victron. I have that open here. In the local um, tab, we're gonna see any Victron devices that we're connected to or connect to. Here I have the charge controller. We're gonna click on it. For phones and Bluetooth devices, you're gonna to need to use the pin code. Default pin code is six zeros. If you've changed that to something else, then you're gonna to wanna to use that password. For the laptop I'm using here today, we're gonna to use a USB cord. That does not require a pin code because you're hardwired to the device. All right, here's the main overview screen for the charge controller. Kind of shows um, what we're currently producing, a kind of trend on how much we've done in the last 30 days. On the right here, we have voltage coming from the array, how much current we have from the solar panels, our battery voltage, amount of current we have going to the batteries. And up here on the top right, we have the gear. If we click on that, that's gonna open up settings. Here we have a few different options of places to go. Primarily, we're gonna to go to the battery tab we're gonna first want to make sure that the battery voltage that the Victron charge controller selected is the right voltage. Um, for today, we're, we have a 48 volt battery, so it's selected at 48 volts, so that's good. The max charge current, this is the amount of current that the charge controller can provide to the batteries. It's kind of the max value. So we wanna make sure that's kind of sized for the cables we have or the limitations on the, the amount of current that the battery can provide. Um, we're gonna next want to select a preset. Victron has a lot of already selected presets that we can select from. Lithium batteries is the last one, so scroll on down and select lithium batteries. This is a great starting point for programming the charge controller for lithium batteries. These Preset values aren't always the exact values you need for your battery. So make sure you check with your manufacturer of your batteries on what parameters they want you to program um, charging and discharging for. We're using Discover Lithium Batteries. They recommend charging to 56.8. So we have that set here. Um, float voltage, Discover recommends 54 volts. So we have that here. Lithium batteries we don't equalize, so it's disabled. You wanna make sure it's disabled for lithium batteries. Um, temperature current compensation is also disabled. We don't do that with lithium batteries. And most lithium batteries, we can't charge them when they're below freezing. So temperature, comp or temperature cutoff um, is, is key for that. Um, let's see. Um, that's pretty much all the settings that you have to set for charging Victron or charging with a Victron charge controller. Um, other features, um, not all charge controllers from Victron have, but some of them have a load output where we can turn on a load, like at dusk, turn it off at dawn. Um, there's relays for just other features, like when the batteries are full, you can turn on a load to shed excess solar, like in water or diversion load. Um, and then for, for some of the bigger charge controllers, they have uh, a display where we can kind of change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And 
That's pretty much all the settings we need to set for Victron charge control or charging lithium batteries. All right, we just went through programming a Victron charge controller on the laptop. Let's take a look at doing it with your phone. So let me get my phone here. All right, so I got Victron Connect already downloaded open. We're going to search for Bluetooth devices in the range of our phone here. And now look, we found the charge controller we have here today. It's a 250-100 right here. We're gonna click on that. First time pairing to it, it's going to kind of connect. It's gonna ask for a pin code. This is brand new charge controller, so it's gonna use the default password of six zeros. So let's type that password in here. And then it's gonna connect. And here we see the overview of the charge controller. Oh look, it says to change the pin code because you're using the default one. It is recommended to change that to something unique so that other people don't connect to your charge controller and, and manipulate the settings. So let's change that pin code. I'm just gonna do something simple today. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And, oh, I guess you have to have six numbers. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, and don't worry if you forget your pin code, you can reset that. We'll look at that in just a minute, but uh, you'll always have access to your Victron devices because we can reset that pin code. Here we have the overview of the charge controller. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to battery. Top, top setting is battery voltage. We are using a 48 volt lithium battery today, so it's set to 48 volts. You wanna make sure that voltage matches your battery voltage because Victron sometimes um, selects the wrong voltage. So you wanna make sure that we have selected the right voltage. Um, we're going to make sure that our max charge current is sized for our system, the wires we're using and the limitations on the battery. We're going to here select a battery preset. Victron has a few to choose from, uh, lead acid batteries, AGMs, and lithium. We're using lithium today. So we're gonna scroll all the way down to Smart Lithium and select that. For the most part, lithium batteries is a great starting point for programming this charge controller for lithium. Not always are these parameters exactly what your manufacturer recommends. So make sure you contact your manufacturer and see what parameters you want for them. For the battery we're using today, they recommend 56.8. For absorb, that's default, so that's great. Float, they recommend 54, so that's what default is. You're gonna wanna make sure if you're using lithium batteries that you have equalization disabled because we don't equalize lithium batteries. We also don't temperature compensate charging lithium batteries, so you wanna make sure that's disabled. Default for a lithium preset, Victron has it so that the temperature cutoff is five degrees Celsius to prevent the charge controller from trying to charge your lithium batteries when they're cold. That uses the internal temperature. If, if we have an external temperature and a Servo GX, it'll use that temperature. It can be disabled if you don't have temperature or you're you having issues there. We also, we're done with the battery settings. Now we can go to other ones, like there's load output for some charge controllers that have load output. You can use that for dust to dawn, turning on a load when it gets, when it gets dark outside, turning that load off when it gets light outside. We have the relay for other charge controllers that we can use to trigger turning on, like a dump load um, when we have excess solar and other kind of fun features like that. Um, and then we have like the display for larger charge controllers. You can have a display. We can set their values to be either Celsius or Fahrenheit. So we can set that to Fahrenheit. And that's pretty much all that we have here. All right, so we're back here at the Victron home screen and Victron Connect. 
Let's say you have forgotten what you used as your unique pin code for your Victron charge controller. Let's look at resetting that. Here, you're gonna see your device. Three little dots here will pop up where you can select reset pen code. You'll enter your PUK number. I already have that here on my clipboard. Let me just paste that here. All right, and then once you do that, you can push OK. It's going to check to make sure you enter the right information. And look, pin code has been reset to six zeros. So now you'll be able to connect with the default pin code and then you'll have the option to change it to a new, unique one. Just make sure you remember it, but we can always reset it if you do forget it again. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you have any questions when selecting a charge controller or wiring your panels, don't hesitate, give us a call, chat with us on our website. We also have some great articles in our learning center for you to review.